Let's analyze the function, the polynomial function, x cubed plus x squared minus 12x. The first thing we'll notice is that the function is in standard form. It is not factored. It is an expanded standard form. That makes it very easy for us to determine the power function, which is the highest degree present in the polynomial, and therefore the end behavior and the potential number of turning points that this function will have. Since the degree of the function is 3, we know that its end behavior is going to resemble the power function, x cubed. The end behavior of this polynomial will extend to positive infinity to the right and negative infinity to the left. And since the degree is 2, there can be at most two turning points on the graph. Now let's look at the factored form of f because this function does factor. First, we'll go ahead and notice that we can take out a greatest common factor of x, which leaves us with x squared plus x minus 12 inside the parentheses. That trinomial can be factored further into x plus 4 and x minus 3. So there are three factors in this function, x, x plus 4, x minus 3. When you set each of these three factors equal to zero and solve for x, you get the roots of the function, or the x-intercepts of the function. We want to look at each of these roots' multiplicities. Since the factor where each of these roots came from has powers equal to 1, so in other words, they don't have exponents. Their secret exponents are 1. That means that their multiplicities are each 1. And whenever you have an odd multiplicity, we know that these roots will be crossing roots at the x-axis. So my x-intercepts are 0, 0, which is also the y-intercept, negative 4, 0, and 3, 0. These points will be useful when we try and graph this polynomial function. Let's go ahead and look at the behavior near each of those roots. In other words, how do these x-intercepts cross the x-axis? Do they touch the x-axis? or do they cross it from bottom to top or top to bottom? To check this behavior, we'll go ahead and plug each real zero, each one of these values here, into the function everywhere, so for every x, except for the x that it came from. So we're not going to plug zero in here because we know that would make the entire function zero. But what we are going to do is we are going to plug zero into this x and this x and simplify the expression in order to see what the behavior near that root is. So after we plug zero into this function except for the root that it came from, we see that this simplifies to negative 12x. When you graph the equation y equals negative 12x, it is a linear equation with a y-intercept of 0, and it should be 0 because that's the root we're talking about here, right? And it has a slope of negative 12. In other words, it's pretty steep downhill. For every one, one unit you run, you rise 12 units. It's pretty steep. So that's how this root behaves when we start graphing it. It's going to be a pretty steep downhill root passing the x-axis on the top on the left side and then switching to the negative side on the right side of zero. It is a decreasing line. So you, you can see when I plug in the other two real zeros into the function everywhere except for where they came from, we end up with two more linear equations. And this makes sense because we have three crossing roots. None of our roots are touching, so they should be linear. So at uh, our root of negative 4, we have a positive 28 slope, which is pretty steep, but, but it's going uphill. So the root at negative 4 is going to be an uphill, an increasing line. And then similarly uh, with the root at 3, we have a positive 36 as the slope, so an even steeper uphill line for that root. So armed with all of this information, the end behavior intercepts, behavior near each root, we can go ahead and graph this function.
We can start by graphing the x and y intercepts. We have an intercept at 0, 0, 3, 0, and negative 4, 0. We know the behavior of each of those intercepts. The 0, 0 intercept is a downhill line. And the other two intercepts are steep uphill lines. So we have an uphill, a downhill, and an uphill, crossing, crossing, crossing. The other thing we know is because if the power function was x to the third, our end behavior is going to resemble that. And so you can see that if this arrow continues on, we do extend into positive infinity as x gets larger. And the end of this graph does extend to negative infinity as x gets smaller. Now we want to connect the endpoints here, finish off the graph, and since we know it's a polynomial, however we connect these lines has to be smooth and continuous. And we know that there are, cannot be more than two turning points. So by connecting these points in this fashion, we get no more than two turning points. And we know there are no other x-intercepts. So we know it's not going to change directions anywhere and decide to cross the x-axis again.